what if I told you that right now we are standing in a town that was completely destroyed by a volcanic eruption? Well, at least it was in the movies. Welcome to Wallace, Idaho, better known to disaster movie fans as the fictional town of Dante's Peak. Today here on The Rock Record, we are exploring the real geology behind one of Hollywood's most famous and one of my personal favorites, volcano disaster films. Was any of it accurate? Could a volcano actually form here? And what makes this charming mining town the perfect disaster movie setting? Welcome back to The Rock Record. Today we are talking rocks and movie magic. In 1997, Pierce Brosnan and Linda Hamilton battled nature's fury in the volcanic disaster film Dante's Peak. But while the erupting volcano was digital, this town is very real. Wallace, Idaho was transformed into the fictional town of Dante's Peak, chosen specifically because of its picturesque mountain setting and the fact that there's only one main route in and out of town, which is perfect for creating that trapped feeling during the movie's climatic escape scenes. The filmmakers weren't looking for just any pretty mountain town. Producer Roger Donaldson said, we need to find a picturesque small town that wouldn't mind being on the receiving end of some substantial physical damage. And Wallace, with its rich mining history and beautiful mountain setting, fit perfectly. The town's preserved historic district and mining heritage made it the ideal backdrop for this movie. In fact, Wallace's entire downtown is registered on the National Register of Historic Places. Even though the movie came out more than 25 years ago, you can still recognize many of the filming locations as you walk through town, and there's some hidden memorabilia around, which I think is so fun. The producers added the volcano digitally, making it appear that a strata volcano loomed over the town. The digital volcano was actually modeled after Mount St. Helens. You can even spot Mount Adams in some of the scenes, which is a real mountain visible from Mount St. Helens. What's fascinating is how this disaster movie captured the public's imagination about volcanoes. Suddenly, you didn't have to be a geologist to think volcanoes were cool anymore, because volcanoes are cool. According to the film's director, they looked at every available piece of literature, movies, documentaries, photographs, anything they could find, and they interviewed real volcanologists to get the science behind the movie right. But let's be real. How much of that science and all of that studying made it accurately into the final film? Let's dig into it. So first, the million dollar question. Could a volcano actually erupt here in Wallace? I hate to disappoint disaster movie fans, but not a chance. Wallace sits in Idaho's Silver Valley, an area famous for its rich mineral deposits, particularly silver, lead, and zinc. The geology here is dominated by the ancient Belt Supergroup, metamorphic rocks dating back over a billion years, overlain by more recent sedimentary rocks. As someone who has worked as a mine geologist, I can tell you that this area has an absolutely fascinating geological story, just not a volcanic one. What we don't have here is the tectonic conditions for volcanic activity. Dante's Peak was supposed to be set in the Cascade Volcanic Range, which spans Washington, Oregon, and Northern California. That region sits on a subduction zone, where one tectonic plate is sinking beneath another. As the subducted plate melts, magma rises to form explosive stratovolcanoes, like Mount St. Helens, which is the kind that we're seeing in the movie. Here in Wallace, we are hundreds of miles away from the near subduction zone. These mountains were formed through different processes entirely primarily through compression and uplift, rather than volcanic activity. To their credit, the filmmakers did consult with real scientists when making Dante's Peak. They brought on several United States Geological Survey veterans, including Jack Lockwood, one of the world's most respected volcanologists whose specialty is volcanic hazards appraisal and volcanic risk management, according to the Google. Another consultant was David Harlow, a volcanologist and earthquake seismologist who was part of the USGS team that studied the devastating mudflows that killed 20,000 citizens of Nevado del Ruiz, Colombia, after the eruption in the mid-1980s. This explains why lahars, or volcanic mudflows, feature so prominently in the film. Norman McLeod was another volcanologist who consulted to ensure that Dante's Peak remained honest to the work of USGS members. Of course, having scientific consultants doesn't always guarantee scientific accuracy. 
Hollywood's need for spectacle and drama often trumps strict adherence to reality. As the screenwriter Leslie Bohem put it, they wanted to create a dramatic piece that is touching and exciting and funny and terrifying, not just a documentary about volcanoes. Lead actor Pierce Brosnan noted, What was fascinating about dealing with this topic is that there is still so little known about these awesome spectacles of nature. That scientific uncertainty gave the filmmakers some creative license, but as we'll see, they took quite a few liberties with the science. Alrighty, so let's have some fun. Let's compare the movie's volcanic disaster to what might happen in a real eruption. First up, those acidic hot springs that boiled those poor teenagers alive. This honestly scared me away from hot springs for years as a kid, and I'm still a little hesitant on them. But are they reality? While volcanic hot springs can become more acidic before an eruption, they generally don't change that drastically in just seconds. According to the U.S. Geological Survey, temperature changes usually take days or weeks to develop. In real volcanic areas, hot springs form when water is heated by nearby magma. This water often contains dissolved minerals from the magma, making it both superheated and acidic. But again, any increase in acidity or temperature would be gradual. You would definitely have time to get out before being cooked. Next up, the acidic lake that melted the aluminum boat. Real volcanic lakes can be extremely acidic. El Chichon in Mexico has a pH of 0.5, and Mount Pinatubo's crater lake hit 1.9. But even at those levels, acid wouldn't eat through a metal boat in minutes. And the fish? They'd have died long before the lake got that acidic. However, the movie does get a few things right. For example, carbon dioxide gas from volcanoes can kill vegetation and animals by seeping through the soil or pooling in low-lying areas. This has happened at Mammoth Mountain in California, where about 100 acres of trees were killed by volcanic CO2. So the scene with the dead wildlife near the lake, that's fairly accurate, just sped up for dramatic effect. How about those earthquakes that destroy buildings and roads? They're a bit over the top. Volcanic earthquakes are usually under magnitude 5, not nearly strong enough to flatten infrastructure the way the movie shows. Mount St. Helens, for instance, had quakes up to magnitude 5 in 1980, which caused shaking and some damage, but not widespread destruction. How about that pyroclastic flow scene, though? These fast-moving clouds of hot gas, ash, and rock can reach speeds of 50 to 125 miles an hour and temperatures up to 1,300 degrees Fahrenheit. The way it barrels down the mountain in the film, that's really how they move and why they're so deadly. But where the movie gets geologically confused is mixing eruption styles. The glowing red lava flows shown are typical of low-viscosity basalt, while towering ash columns and pyroclastic flows come from much thicker magmas, like andesite, dacite, or rhyolite. It's rare, though not impossible, for a volcano to erupt both types at once. And finally, driving across a lava flow? Yeah, that's pure Hollywood. Fresh lava can reach 1,700 degrees Fahrenheit, hot enough to melt tires, ignite fuel tanks, and ruin your day. Sorry, Harry Dalton, but that getaway scene wouldn't end well in real life. Do you remember how our heroes took refuge in a mine at the end of the movie? Well, that is one of the few plot points that has a connection to the real Wallace. Wallace and the surrounding Silver Valley are famous for their mining history. The Silver Valley got its name honestly. The area has produced over a billion ounces of silver since mining began in the 1880s making it one of the most productive silver districts in world history. At one time, this valley produced about 50% of all silver mined in the United States. The Silver Valley's mining history dates back to 1884, when Noah Kellogg, yes, related to the cereal family, discovered the Bunker Hill and Sullivan veins. Many of the mines here reached depths of over 6,000 feet below surface, far deeper than most volcanic effects would reach. As a former mine geologist myself, I can tell you that mine tunnels are designed to withstand the incredible pressure of the rock above them. Mining engineers use various support systems, from simple wooden timbers in older mines, to modern rock bolts, wire mesh, and shockcrete, all to prevent cave-ins. In the movie, the abandoned mine provides shelter from the pyroclastic flow. While mines probably wouldn't be my first choice of shelter for natural disasters, After all, abandoned mines do tend to come with their own hazards. 
the thick rock overburden of a mine tunnel might actually provide some protection from the extreme heat and ash of a pyroclastic flow. So while hiding in a mine during a volcanic eruption may not be the standard safety protocol, it's honestly not the craziest idea to pitch. If you're interested in learning more about Wallace's fascinating mining history, be sure to check out my rock record video on the perfect day trip to Wallace and the Silver Valley. We'll explore the mining museum and even take an underground mine tour. The mining history here is the real geological story of this region, and it is just as fascinating as any Hollywood disaster scenario, though thankfully with fewer volcanoes and pyroclastic flows. Now I know what you might be thinking, if not in a mine, where should I shelter during a volcanic eruption? While you're pretty unlikely to be caught by surprise by a volcanic eruption, because modern monitoring gives a pretty good warning, it is still worth knowing some basics. The CDC and Ready.gov offer straightforward advice for staying safe during a volcanic eruption. Rule number one, always follow evacuation orders. If local authorities say leave, leave early. If you're caught outside during ashfall, protect yourself. Wear long sleeves, pants, goggles, and most importantly, an N95 mask if you have one. Volcanic ash isn't like fireplace ash. It's made of sharp, microscopic bits of rock and glass that can damage your lungs. If evacuation isn't possible, shelter in place. Seal your home by closing windows, doors, and fireplace dampers. Turn off fans and HVAC systems to keep ash from being pulled indoors. If you're wanting to drive during ashfall, avoid it if you can. Ash clogs engines, reduces visibility, and makes roads slippery. If you have to drive, keep your windows up and don't use the AC. If you're near a pyroclastic flow or lahar, evacuate immediately. Head uphill and away from valleys and rivers. Lahars can travel fast and far. Unlike in Dante's Peak, you're not outrunning one of these in a damaged truck. The biggest takeaway from this movie, though, is to pay attention to alerts. Eruptions rarely happen without warning, and the U.S. Volcano Notification Service offers real-time updates to help keep communities safe. For a dramatic look at real volcanoes in action, be sure to check out our previous rock record video from Hawaii Volcanoes National Park, where we explored active volcanoes that are properly monitored and much better understood than the fictional Dante's Peak. One thing Dante's Peak got mostly right was volcanic monitoring, although they did take some creative liberties. In the film, Pierce Brosnan's character uses a mix of instruments to detect signs of an impending eruption. Gas measurements, earthquake monitoring, and ground deformation. Real volcanologists use those same tools. According to the USGS, scientists rely on data from monitoring instruments placed around the volcano, often transmitting information via radio or satellite. These include seismometers to track earthquakes, GPS and tilt meters to detect ground swelling, gas sensors, temperature probes, and even devices to detect mud flows. The movie also captures the uncertainty of volcanic forecasting. Some eruptions can happen within days of the first warning signs. Mount St. Helens in 1980 erupted just seven days after intense earthquake activity began. But other volcanoes may rumble for months or years without erupting at all. And sometimes they're just getting comfortable before quieting back down. That uncertainty makes the work of volcanologists incredibly challenging. They must weigh the risks of false alarms, which can erode public trust and hurt local economies, against the danger of missing a real warning, which can be catastrophic as we've seen in the film Dante's Peak. In real life, the Cascades Volcano Observatory monitors the volcanoes in the same region where Dante's Peak is supposedly set, including Mount Rainier and Mount St. Helens. The observatory is named in honor of David A. Johnston, a volcanologist who accurately warned of Mount St. Helens' eruption in 1980 and tragically lost his life during the event. Wallace, Idaho might not be actually at risk of a volcanic eruption anytime soon, but it is still a fascinating geological destination. The rich mining history and beautiful mountains definitely make it worth a visit, volcanic disaster or not. In fact, I have a whole video about spending the perfect weekend here in Wallace, so make sure you check that out. While Dante's Peak took plenty of Hollywood creative liberties, it got one thing right. Volcanoes are powerful, unpredictable, and awe-inspiring. And so are the scientists who study them. As the film's producer put it, it isn't just lava rushing down a mountain. There are pyroclastic clouds, lahars, earthquakes, fires, and floods. That part's true. 
volcanoes can unleash multiple hazards. The movie just compressed them all into one eruption, which is unlikely but not entirely impossible. Even the U.S. Geological Survey admits that, in many but not all respects, the movie's depiction of eruptive hazards hits close to the mark, especially when it comes to the sheer power of an eruption. So while Hollywood definitely amps up the drama, the real science is just as fascinating, and often more surprising. Thank you so much for joining me on this special movie-themed episode of The Rock Record. If you enjoyed this blend of geology and pop culture, let me know in the comments what other movie locations you'd like for me to explore, and maybe we'll check them out. Until next time, keep exploring the stories written in stone, and maybe check your volcano hazard maps before buying any real estate.